Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. Thank you for joining me for this edition of Meteor Marks a Weather Northeastern and Hurricane Northeastern. Take a look at this. Yeah, this is essentially most likely our next name storm and our next hurricane. Not going to be a major hurricane, but it's going to be a pretty strong hurricane. So please stay tuned for this one. Look at this. Showing towards the middle of this week, towards the end of this week, it has its eyes on Florida. Yes, and an area of high pressure to the north will help to steer this system as a hurricane into the Florida Peninsula and the Bahamas. And then takes it, you guessed it, up the east coast as the high pressure retreats. And it could be quite a scenario here across the east coast. Without wasting any more time, let's get into it. All right, so here is our infrared satellite picture. This is a really interesting system. You know, right now it looks like, you know, it's some sort of extra tropical system. Look at the comma shaped here. All the thunderstorms are on the eastern, far eastern side here. We actually got dry air that's wrapping around in initially. So, be, you know, until we can get some development, that dry air is going to continue to try to erode the system from the south. But I think that will become a much more symmetrical system as it gets up into this area, northeast of the Bahamas. Initially, though, look at this. The storm, storm system has a lot going for it here. Um, Getting into the NHC's forecast here, 90% chance through day five here. This is going to go up to 100% here momentarily. But Florida at the moment looks pretty clear. Look how big this circulation is. All right, so let's take a look at the GFS here to start off, and I'll show you the Euro. They're actually really identical. This makes the forecast pretty easy, unfortunately, for you in Florida, along the east coast of Florida. Thankfully, this is not going to be another Ian but I warn you, it will be a pretty strong hurricane. Not a major hurricane, but a pretty strong hurricane. So this takes us through Monday, 4 a.m. Here it is. It is organizing. I think sometime Monday we'll have a depression or a storm forming here. You can see it has a lot of tropical moisture trying to funnel around it. But it also has some problems with some dry air that I'll show you on the dry air model here uh, with the Euro. But it is going to look, it's got an interesting structure and I think in time it will become fully tropical. You can see by Tuesday at 7 a.m., here it is. And look at this. As it towards, goes towards the Bahamas here, it looks a bit more formidable here. Take a look at this. This is 4 a.m. Wednesday morning. So essentially, there is the center of circulation. It's definitely a tropical storm by this point um, in time. And then it goes towards the Bahamas here. It will be battling a lot of dry air. Not going to lie there. A lot of dry air to be had in this system. You can see, especially on the southeast side of this system, there'll be dry air here wrapping around in. Um, but the north, northwest, northeast side of this system will definitely have a lot of strong wind and rain. And then look at this. As we head throughout the day on Wednesday, 10 p.m., it really starts to get its act together. In fact, we're kind of forming somewhat of a potential eye somewhere in here. Uh, the previous GFS model run was a bit more pronounced with it, so we'll continue to watch. There it is. You can make out the center of circulation here. We're definitely looking at some sort of, let's get my pencil here, some sort of eye at this point. It's just north of West Palm Beach over towards Port St. Lucie and Palm Bay here. So definitely looking at landfall early Thursday morning here. Take a look at, here it is. So this coming in, here's the center of circulation just off the coast and the GFS taking, wobbling it a little bit further north up the coast um, and then taking it inland towards Orlando. This is 1 p.m. Thursday. Here's the center of circulation going over towards Tampa at this point, uh, just east of Tampa. So the I'm going to show you the Euro momentarily here. It's very, very similar. It's almost a carbon copy which is almost unheard of, you know, this far out. So it's good to see some unanimous agreement here on the models. And then look at that. It stalls it Friday morning, 1 a.m., right around Tampa, just east of Tampa. The heaviest rain continuing east, as it does on these tropical systems, all these feeder bands along the east coast of Florida. And then look what we start to see up here into the mid-Atlantic. Yeah, this is as the high-pressure retreats here to the east with this area of high pressure you get this southerly flow well here is the next front up here and these are going to combine forces with this system watch this as we go in time we're going to start to see rain really breaking out across parts of the mid-atlantic at this point this is friday at 7 p.m just as you're getting you know just after getting out of work heavy rain developing all the way up into parts of upstate new york just south of new york city 
here is our center of circulation by this point of this hurricane or tropical storm or whatever it is by this point. I think it'll still maintain a name. And look at this. We're getting up into 1 a.m. Saturday across parts of the mid-Atlantic and northeast. You can see the center of circulation is down here into parts of the Carolinas. And look at this moisture surge up here into New York State, Pennsylvania, eastern Virginia, and then eventually here into southern New England. So it's definitely going to start out as a very rainy and stormy weekend. This is 4 a.m. Saturday, and then 7 a.m. Saturday, we're pulling that east of mainly the I-81 corridor. The I-95 corridor here is really socked in. Look at this. This is just terrible. This, I mean, if you've got to drive up and down along the coastline here, it's going to be windy and rainy and very stormy. So keep that in mind. There will be beach erosion going on in the system. By this point, we'll probably start to become a little extra tropical. It's a little muddled as to where the circulation is. But I believe it's down into parts of the outer banks here at this time. So as we actually, let's uh, take that back a couple frames here. Take a look at this. So yeah, here we are Saturday afternoon at 1 p.m. You can see the center of circulation just east of Virginia Beach. So it's continuing that conveyor belt of moisture. Look at that Rhode Island. You could be seeing some heavy, heavy, heavy rain here. And all of these winds out of the northeast continuing to howl here. So this system, you will not be able to get rid of this on Saturday across parts of New England. We're still continuing even when the precipitation ends here into parts of just west of Boston and Providence here. This is 7 p.m. Saturday. You're still going to have winds howling even back to the west here. So getting up into parts of Maine, and then it starts to become a Canadian Maritimes problem as we get into Saturday night here and into Sunday. This is Sunday morning at 1 a.m., Nova Scotia. It's making landfall and then becoming really extra tropical as it moves up into the northeast. You see what starts to form behind it here, and I'll get into that in later on in the video here Lake effect snow potential here. Lake effect rain showers and snow showers. So yeah, we start to see the stratiform cloud deck, this upper level low up into eastern Canada. And this is the start of our big wintry pattern. And there will be the potential here in the Caribbean, the Western Caribbean, as we head beyond November 15th here, we could be looking at the potential for another tropical system down here into Latin America. Please stay tuned for that. All right, so let's take a look at the euro here. This is essentially what we're looking at. Uh, initially, this system looks more like a subtropical system. You know, dry air is in training on the east side and moist air on the extreme eastern side and then on the western side. So this is kind of a lopsided system initially. But as we go in time, the euro paints a very similar picture. Initially, the system bends more towards the uh, north with response to that trough that, that kicks out to the northeast and then high pressure up here builds in, which helps to block it and veer it more towards southwesterly towards the Florida Peninsula. And as you can see here, there's the Euro taking it towards West Palm Beach there. Very similar location as the GFS. This is Thursday, early Thursday morning, November 10th. And then the Euro takes it a little bit inland here. And then you see it's so just east of Tampa. This is by Thursday uh, Thursday afternoon, early afternoon. So uh, at this point, the high pressure has slipped to the east here. And this is the periphery of that high pressure. So it's going to start to take that more, more northeasterly jog, thankfully, uh, to the Gulf here. The, the Euro takes it as far west as Tampa, stalls it for a bit into early Friday. So you're getting some heavy rain there into western Florida. And then look at that. Brings it up the East Coast. This is Saturday morning towards the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And then taking it up into parts of the Northeast just off the coastline there. And as we take a look, we'll take a look on the North Atlantic shot there. There it is. There it's going. I'll show you that. There's the high pressure. See how it's retreating off to the Northeast here. So this is going to allow our system, our hurricane... To move up the east coast to the United States. And you can see, look at that. There's that next trough, that area of low pressure. It kind of combines forces. So we're going to have some really heavy rain up into parts of New England here. And look how this moves off to the northeast. It actually strengthens to 985 millibars here on the Euro. So definitely looking at a strong storm up here in the parts of the northeast. It should be rather interesting, 977 millibars. By this time, though, it will be becoming extra tropical or subtropical. 
So you can see it taking on that full classification, that full conversion there as it goes up into the Canadian Maritimes by early Monday of next week. All right, so taking a look at the wind field of this potential hurricane, look at this. As it goes across the Bahamas, this is Wednesday, later Wednesday, 987 millibars. You see upwards of 60 knot plus here. Um, these are not gusts. These are just sustained winds. So that is pretty remarkable. 977 millibars here as it makes landfall uh, early Thursday morning and then heads inland Thursday afternoon. You can see the latest GFS is very similar to the Euro, taking it just near Tampa before stalling it for a day, and then Friday it resumes to the northeast as it goes around that periphery of that retreating high pressure to the northeast and that trough up here to the north. All right, so we're going to look at precipitation amounts here. Initially through the week, not much until we get to Thursday here. There's the Florida Peninsula really adding up here. The only thing that's going to keep rainfall totals maybe much lower than they normally would be with this system is the fact that it'll be moving pretty fast. So we're looking at in this region, uh, the yellows and the oranges, four to six solid inches, locally higher amounts to eight here. So this is pushing in just north of Miami. And then we get up here into parts of the Carolinas. Look at that. We're looking at three to five inches up here as well. Now, for those of you in the northeast, let's cruise our way up regionally to the northeastern part of the United States. So as we get up into here, parts of the northeast. Yeah. So about that. So you look, there's fr through Friday. So very little amounts of rain. This is Friday night and Saturday. Most of this falling Saturday, early Saturday morning through late Saturday. So you get solid one inch here into the purples. Now, if you're into the reds along the I-80 or along the I-95 corridor here, look at this. Yeah, you're getting into two to three inches. And then here in Cape Cod, southeastern Massachusetts, the possibility of four, maybe five inches here into parts of eastern Virginia here as well. So definitely want to watch out for this. Uh, we'll fine-tune these amounts as the week wears on and the storm becomes more certain as to the track. All right, so taking a look at the upper air pattern here, we've got the old good old Euro, King Euro here. So initially, take a look at this. So this is our developing tropical system out here in the Atlantic. This is why initially you see the shape of this high-pressure system you know, it veers it towards the southwest. It can't go north, northeast, north. It's got to go, it can't even go due west. It's going to go southwest here. So watch this. As we go in time, this high pressure strengthens and it forces it into initially South Florida here. This is by Thursday, November 10th. So here's that high pressure system. You see how it's starting to go towards east. There's that next trough. Now watch this as we go in time. These are the steering currents you see going on this trough eroding that ridge pushing that ridge to the north and helping the system become absorbed into the westerlies as you got this trough behind it so this is perfect timing to pick it to go up the east coast and up the east coast it does look at that trough next weekend sunday november 13th this is the start of our wintry blast this is what i wanted to show you look what we got going on up here into northwestern north america alaska in the yukon territory this is a super mega ridge when this develops you normally get a massive trough along the u.s east coast and that's what we're going to see and this is going to be the pattern to change us to a much more wintry pattern especially going into thanksgiving week all right so each triple r model here essentially our future radar let's take a look and see what's going on here so as we go in time those showers and thunderstorms across the northeast as we get later into Sunday night into Monday. You know, we'll still have some 1 a.m. early Monday morning. You can see in the parts of the northeast here. Thankfully, none of these are really severe. So that's the good news. And they kind of extend down here into parts of the south. You know, you have some of these areas getting in on the act. But for the most part, it's not looking too bad up here. Um, watch this as we head into Monday during the day. That clears out across the northeast. This is 7 a.m. You'll still have some showers and some thunder showers here in the parts of southern and southeastern New England. But as that front moves through, it will we'll eke out a pretty nice day here across the northeast. You can see not looking too bad. There is our H triple R models actually picking up our tropical system out here in the Atlantic. You can see it. There's the center of circulation becoming a lot better defined. We might have an actual storm. Uh, 
name storm on Monday at some point, and look at that. Yeah, it's the, the big story here across the East is going to be, at this point, our tropical system as it moves towards Florida. HRRR really coming in on board with, you know, veering it towards the southwest here, towards uh, initially South Florida, and then more towards up towards the peninsula, and then up towards the East Coast. And Jim here off the coast of Groton, Connecticut. Take a look at this beautiful shot. Wow. That is a sight to behold there. It looks like some fogginess here uh, with the sun. And look at that. Look at all that nice. You can see just all that layering of moisture there. The fogginess. And the sun just shining through at this time of year. The sun angle so much lower. It just plays on the lighting, which is nice. And all the water droplets that are in the air. You can see, look at that. Clearing up. Another beautiful shot there. Look at the water. It looks a bit more stirred up there, but wow, we're really getting some beautiful weather here across the Northeast. Nice captures there, Jim. And John from David Beckham Street, Waltham Forest, UK. This past Saturday, take a look at this. Some 20 degrees Celsius weather with 19 degrees Celsius and rain clearing. Take a look at this. And looking good out there. You can see the clearing skies there, patches of blue. Fall is definitely in the air. So nice captures there, John. Temperature-wise, yeah. These, you can see there's some hint at some cold air here bottled up over the northern plains, mainly into western Canada here. But look at this. South of this line, it's definitely 60 degrees. It's crazy to even think about this. Into Tuesday, that warm weather bubbles up to the north into the plains. We get a little bit of a cool down here in the northeast, 40s north of that line. But watch this. As we go in time here, we're going to see another warming trend take place. While the west out here gets much colder, look at that, 20 degrees north of that line, 10 degrees north of that line. It's crazy to even think about because look at this, we're getting up into the 70s into parts of Nebraska and Iowa and back into the 60s and 50s here into parts of the northeast. So we're continuing to remain pretty warm for this time of year. Uh, look at this, we're pushing 70 degrees up to Michigan here, 60s into the northeast. And as we get into TGIF Friday, Wow, this cold air really starts to make it southward into the plains here. We're still into the 60s and near 70 degrees into the northeast for your Saturday. We start to see a sign here that that trough is really going to win out here. And we start to see, look at that, north of that line, it is in the 40s. The extended outlook for my hometown viewers, Binghamton to Scranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley of upstate New York and in northeast Pennsylvania. Monday through Friday here, look at this. Still well above average. Look at that windy Monday with sunny skies clearing 68. Look at that. We will get a little cool spell here Tuesday into Wednesday. Look at that going down to 20 for your low on Wednesday. That's the coldest air of the season. But we'll quickly bounce back up Thursday and Friday towards the upper 60s to near 70 degrees. Chance of showers with the next frontal boundary on Friday. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Eastern and Northeastern as well guess what winter weather outlook it's in the description in the link down below also the link in this video you're probably seeing it on the screen now click it go to my winter weather outlook watch it you'll love it and facebook at media mark also weather northeastern also hurricane northeastern at twitter at weather eastern media weathernortheastern.com